An illusion is turning something into something it's not. A hallucination is creating something that doesn't exist. And you know that in stage hypnosis, some of the people on stage do have that experience. Not the, not the majority, but the minority. Uh, the fact is, <clears throat> if you can get to that state, that stage where you could really do that, um, then I think you'd have a higher success rate. But I think if a lot of people, just like the visual imagery, if they, if it's just, if they can't really feel it's happening, there's going to be a disconnection in the belief of it. Do you think with that aversion therapy for smoking, though, if you're putting the suggestions into the person about cancer and dying, aren't you doing more harm? Because if they accept yeah, that, well, you smoke. think about it. You think about it because if they don't stop smoking, now, now yeah, they're they're going to convince the disease. Disease, disease is going to, you know, happen, and it could definitely happen that way. So I, I think aversion therapy as a last resort, I think, you know, could work. Just like regression, you know, I don't know if Gerald Kine still does this, but I think he focused a lot on regression therapy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, and I think regression therapy is great, but you might open up a can of worms. You know, I mean, there is hypnotists that have done these past life regressions with people in training courses, and, and there, were pe there were people that have meltdowns. I did an ERT for regression therapy in England, a three-day course a few years ago, and I had to undo in one lady two really extremely negative past life regressions, whether it was real or imagination. You know, I'm not going to put any value judgment on it, but I had to do all this. I had to undo the damage that this training course did when she went to these past lives and she her children were murdered and she was tortured oh, wow. and all of this weird stuff, you know. Whether it's real or imagination, now they're haunted by it, like a ghost, you know what I mean? Wow. So, so part of what I had to do was um, detox her from, from this, these two past life regressions. It was weird. I videoed it. it was, it's pretty interesting. It was pretty neat. You know, I never had to undo damage like that, damage control, you know? But I think, I think even when we practice, and I've done past life, I've done hundreds of them. I had problems in, in Taiwan doing group past life regressions, you know? So I think regression therapy in an uncontrolled environment is kind of dangerous. Do you guys feel that way? You don't only do it in a control if you know what you're doing, and if you know how to undo what you uncover. Exactly, but when you teach regression therapy, and you do group regression, whether it's age regression or past life, anything can happen, so whether it's I'll, real I'll, or imagination. I do regression, but I, don't, I would never do Public stuff. I would well, never approve. There was one, there was a um, group in Sydney that did it as a therapy, and one woman committed suicide after the session. Wow. And they had to shut down that whole group. They called it PowerPoint. It was supposed to be helping people who get, get through depression. And they did an inner child regression for everybody in the group to win. They were just small and put loving statements in and everything like that. But this woman had a really bad childhood. And when they brought them out, whoever it was didn't bring them out properly. She went up to her room and people said she was still skipping around like a little girl. Went on top of the wow. building, threw herself off. Oh, God. So you, you never do it in the group. Never do it in the group. That, and it's difficult to teach it without somebody. And sometimes students will really try to do it on each other, mm -hmm. even when you're, when you're teaching a course like that. And so you've got to watch out for that. I've seen students traumatized because someone was doing some hypnotherapy on them when you're learning these techniques. That's why I say it doesn't matter if we're hypnotizing people or not. You got to just, I want you to get the dynamics uh, uh, of the process them, themselves. Um, I taught a course in England and this one French guy kept saying, I want to experience ph phenomenon. You know, like some of the, I find the most, the most difficult people to hypnotize in my 30 years are hypnotists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they're so thinking so much and trying so hard to have some altered reality experience. Or analyzing that, that, you. Yeah, huh? Or analyzing you as the hypnotist. Or analyzing me. Or their belief is, if I can't have this experience, then I'm not going to be able to give somebody else this experience. Mm 